Greetings, I'm Nurse Wind of Cawdor, and I'd like to welcome you to Pensit class, How to Make Furniture That Packs Flat to Fit in Your Car. I'm headed to Pensick, and I'd like to bring as much furniture as will fit in the car. My household has four people in it, and I'd like to bring furniture for everybody. The table is eight feet long and has four stools. I feel sure I can get the table and stools in the car, but I also want to bring the cooler chest. Oh, and I want to bring beds for everyone. And the little chests for clothes. How much of all this can I get in the car? Now, they say a stupid amount of stuff will fit in a minivan. Actually, half a minivan, because I'm also bringing a tent. It so happens that when I was young, I worked in the space program. One of the first things a young satellite engineer learns is that if you want to put a satellite on orbit, you first have to fold it up into a tiny package so it will fit into the launch vehicle. So what does this have to do with getting furniture in the car? In a word, IKEA. IKEA is the 9th century Viking term for fits in the car. No, I made that up. But the concept still holds. Take the thing apart, pack the pieces flat, and assemble them when you arrive at... Here's an example. I ordered these stools from Amazon. They arrived in a flat box, and I took out the pieces and assembled them. These stools are held together with screws, eight per stool. And it takes me 10 or 15 minutes to assemble each one. I have four stools total, so the assembly time really starts to add up. All of that furniture has to go in here. I don't have a trailer or even a roof rack. The tent canvas goes on one side and the tent poles go down the middle. That leaves a footprint two and a half feet wide and eight feet long for all the rest of the furniture. This two and a half by eight foot piece of canvas represents the available cargo space. I'm going to try to fit all my furniture on it in a stack no more than two feet tall. The tabletop is biggest, so it gets packed first. There's room between the table legs for the stools. The table and stools make a two inch high layer. The beds are next. Each two beds form a layer about three and a half inches high. I approach this as a puzzle. I'm trying to create an almost solid block of wood. I pack the cooler chest last. Once it's been taken apart, it forms a layer less than two inches thick. There's a little space left over. I use it to stow a side rail that wouldn't fit anywhere else. This is the stack of table, stools, beds, and cooler chest. It hasn't gone over the canvas representing its allotted space, and it's less than 12 inches tall. That means there's still room for the little chests.
it brings the stack up to almost 23 inches tall, but that's not so terrible. I couldn't let that space up front go to waste, though, so I filled it with the little stools. That way, I don't have to assemble them on site, and there was much rejoicing. And there's still space at the end of the stack for the cooler. Not the cooler chest, the real cooler, the plastic box that's filled with ice. So, to summarize, we just went from this to this, a stack of furniture parts that takes up only half the cargo bed of the van. It's less than two feet tall, so there's room above it for hampers and bedding. I forgot to say earlier, but when I'm packing the car for travel, I don't build the stack in the driveway, I build it inside the car. There's no way anybody could lift it. And when all the furniture is on board, the car rides pretty low in the water. Let's say I've just arrived at Penzik. I've been driving all day. It's hot. I'm tired. And I'd rather be thinking about dinner. But, before I head off to the Beast and Boar, I have to assemble a whole lot of furniture. Four beds, a table, and the chest for the cooler. That could take a long time. The first pack flat furniture I made was held together with screws. The beds and tables were sturdily built, but it could take hours to assemble them all. Before long, I began to wish for snapped together furniture. Something like that. So how do we make beds that snap together? The secret is bed rail connectors. We attach, use them to attach the rails to the headboard, and we get a nice sturdy joint that comes apart just as easily. Now, bed rail connectors have been around for a long time. This one, it's hooks that go into vertical slits and drop into place. Another design is um, a keyhole button, or sorry, a keyhole slot, and it drops over buttons on a plate and snaps into place. Both of those are a little bit rattly and produce a, a wobbly structure. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a door hinge as a connector. When you pull the pin, it comes apart easily. And it goes back together just as easily. Um, but that also produces a, a wobbly joint because it has a lot of play. And I've stopped using them. What I do like are these. Uh, they're called no mortise fasteners. And uh, one drops into the other. Um, the two of these are identical, so you, you put one on each side, and um, there you are. Now, to me, this looks kind of modern. I mean, really, there's nothing to it. It's a plank, two posts, and some screws to hold, hold it together. So to make it look period, I like to put in a couple of corbels, two in the front and two in the, the back headboards, footboards. And corbels are fun because they're easy to make. You take scrap wood uh, left over from making the rails and the headboard, uh, headboard slat, and you draw a square and you draw a circle and you cut it into four pieces and each of those pieces is a corbel. All right. Another thing you can do to make them look period uh, is to varnish them colors associated with the Middle Ages. 
and something I like to do is fake a rope bed. I mean the ropes, they just go around the back. They are not real. I mean this is a firm base and with memory foam on top. It is not a rope bed. Um, but I think they really do add to the looks and uh, they're fun to make. The bed was inspired by a camp bed in the Panther Primitives catalog. It's the size of a single bed and it comes apart for easy transport. It has a plywood base and a foam slab for the mattress. I liked it a lot, but I needed something longer and narrower like a camping cot. It had to be narrower than a single bed in order to fit in the car and longer because the men in my family are tall. So here's what I did. I made something inspired by the camp bed, but with the longer, narrower dimensions of a camping cot. It's two and a half feet wide, close to seven feet long, and 18 inches high. It's 30 inches wide, 80 inches long, and 18 inches high, which is the standard height of a chair. If you're going to sit on your bed, you might as well be comfortable. Now it's time to lay a platform in the bed frame. Most people use plywood for the base, but plywood can be half an inch thick, it's heavy, and it takes up a lot of room in the car. Therefore, I prefer to use beaver board, a pressed fiber building material. It's used for the pegboard behind a workbench. Beaver board is a thin, floppy material that's easy to carry. However, it's not very strong. If I put it in the bed frame without any support beneath it and then sat on it, it would collapse beneath my weight. So I support it on a row of slats. I turn them on edge because they're stronger that way. A sheet of beaver board on slats feels as solid as a heavy sheet of plywood. It is not going to collapse on me. I planned to use a slab of foam for the mattress. I finally found one at the fabric store. But when I saw the price they were asking, my eyes bulged on stocks. However, there's a cheaper way to buy foam. Mattress stores carry something called a foam mattress topper. This one is a queen size. It's 60 inches wide and 80 inches long. I cut it in half to get two 30 by 80 inch mattresses, which is exactly what I need for the beds. There's one more lesson learned. This slab of foam is three inches thick. Three inches is enough, although when you're sleeping, you'll occasionally feel the hard surface beneath you. I think four inches would have been better. The main thing to know about building a bed, there, perfect. The main thing to know about building a bed is that it's made from two headboards connected to each other by two rails. Each headboard consists of two square posts, the legs of the bed, secured to a pine board. The legs are permanently attached to the board with long screws. The side rails fasten to the headboard with bed rail connectors. The platform that holds the mattress rests on narrow strips of wood installed along the side rails and the headboards. The beds are made from pine lumber in standard sizes. The only things I couldn't find at the hardware store were bed rail connectors, but they were readily available online. Bed rail connectors aren't just for beds. This cooler chest is held together with bed rail connectors. Unlike the beds, the chest is made primarily from birch plywood. Birch plywood costs twice as much as regular plywood, but it gives a better result. It's the difference between rough construction materials and fine cabinetry. Half a sheet of birch plywood is enough for the front, back, and side panels. Ordinary plywood can be used for the removable floor, as it doesn't show. The lid is made from pine boards. The removable floor sits on top of stops, 
and has a handhold cut into it to make it easier to lift. The stops, which are made from thin strips of wood, are installed on both of the side panels and on the back panel. There is not a stop on the front panel. There can't be. A front panel stop would catch on the floor during installation. The lid is made from boards held together by end caps, which also serve a cosmetic purpose. They conceal the rough ends of the boards. The lid is permanently attached to the back panel. Be sure to use a hinge that folds all the way back. Otherwise, the lid and back panel will not pack flat. Also, it's a nice touch that when you open the chest, the lid folds all the way back. Each corner is held together by two bed rail connectors, top and bottom. For a bed, you'd buy one set of bed rail connectors, but for a chest, you'd have to buy two. The front, back, and sides are made from birch plywood. Birch plywood is higher quality than regular plywood. It looks like fine furniture when it's finished and stained. The rope handles don't have knots on the inside. The cooler chest was sized to fit the cooler. I had to leave some space in the back to allow the lid to open. It's easiest to build the chest around the cooler. The lid is made from boards which are held together by end cap. Like the beds, I made the chest 18 inches high so it's comfortable to sit on. You can make the chest look more period by adding medieval details. The rope handles are spliced on the outside of the chest. Any knots on the inside would interfere with the handles of the cooler. The splice is wrapped in leather to make it more comfortable in your hand. These lap hinges, which I found on Etsy, were made by a blacksmith. I made this lock plate by sawing a few inches off the end of a flat bar of metal, filing off the corners, and drilling a hole to look like a keyhole. It's not a real lock, because I'm just not that worried about anyone trying to steal my Diet Cokes. Another way to make the chest look more period is to paint it with a design that might have been used to decorate a medieval chest. This is more Lord of the Rings, but hey. If you want to be more authentic, you might decorate it with your own heraldic device. Or, failing that, there's a great variety of medieval art to choose from. It might be that the painting you want to copy is beyond your skill as an artist. Or perhaps you ran out of calendar before you ran out of chores. That's where decoupage comes in. The word decoupage is French for to cut out. It's the art of decorating something by gluing on colored paper cutouts. To create the look of hand-painted art, I search online for something I like, then print it out and glue it to the front of the chest with a clear coat of polyurethane. After the paper is polyurethaned, it becomes completely waterproof. All of my chests that look like they were painted are actually decoupaged. The finished product is not the real thing. I think of it as morally equivalent to using the replicator on Star Trek. Your Klingon mother-in-law may not approve, but it gets the job done. Decoupage can also be used to create the look of linen fold paneling. A printout of linen fold is taped to a stained and finished piece of wood. On this chest, I used four panels instead of three. There's a seam between the two sheets of paper, but I hid it among the folds of the linen the finished result looks three-dimensional, but it's as flat as the panel it's glued to. You can simulate other styles using the same technique. Here are the three Gothic panels taped to the front of a little chest. Any photograph of wood carving can be decoupaged. Decoupage can give you an impressive result for very little effort. I start with a printout of linen fold paneling. I lay it on the front of the chest and mark the corners with pencil. I wet the brush with clear polyurethane gloss 
and apply a thick coat to the surface of the chest. I lay the linen fold printout on top of the first coat of polyurethane and smooth out the bubbles. I paint a second coat of polyurethane over the linen fold printout. When it dries, it will have the look of real linen fold paneling. Bed rail connectors don't work for everything. I was so sure the bed design could be modified to make a sturdy table base, but I was wrong. The table leg is twice as long as the leg of a bed, and the greater lever arm overwhelmed the connector. In other words, the bed was stable, but the table was not. After a few more failed experiments, I decided to attach the legs to the underside of the table with piano hinges. Then, I bolted the rails to the legs to create a sturdy base for the table. It worked like a charm, but the rails need two bolts at each end. If a rail is pinned by a single bolt, the whole structure will fold like a lawn chair. First, I assemble the stools. Each stool takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes to assemble. The legs are held to the tabletop with piano hinges and secured by a spring clip. I installed the clip after a failed attempt to carry the table with the legs flopping all over the place. Not fun. The rails go on last. They hold the legs in place and keep the table from wobbling. Two bolts hold the rail to the leg. I cut handholds in the tabletop to make it easier to lift. So that's how to build a table. It's sturdy, quick to set up, and it will fit in your car. To give the table some period details, I added corbels to the top of each leg and cut decorative quadrifoils into each stretcher. It wasn't hard to do, and I think it really added to the look. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me at Uvatha the Horseman at gmail.com.